Want to have your clip featured in the Skyrim Clip of the Week? Simply record the clip on your Xbox and then send it to me via message. My gamertag is iryeni, that's I-R-Y-E-N-I, and then you can message it to me over Xbox and I'll be able to view it. I look forward to seeing the clips that you guys send me. Now moving on to the video. Hey, what's up guys? It's Ryan and welcome back to another episode of Modded Monday. We're on week number 166 now, guys. I've picked out five new mods for you guys to check out and perhaps add them to your load order if you find them interesting. So let's just jump straight into it. Starting off at our number five spot, we have the Frost Coursers Mahale Monsters and Animals mod. And the mod page reads, now you can ride a legendary Snow Elf's Frost Mare. Made of its purest ice and adorned with the finest jewelry, this ice-carved steed is a construct animated by rudimentary Reichling magic. Mimicking the frost mares that will surely give your gameplay a unique tone of surreality. Now basically what this mod does is it adds a mountable horse that you can summon and it's a frost courser that can be found in Dark Fall Cave and a little bit of the background information about the frost courser itself is the frost mares were known as the legendary war mounts of the snow elves during the Morethic era. Equipped with refined ivory armor, these mares appear to be made of the purest and hardest ice and are shrouded in an icy wind. The same icy wind that forms their manes and tails also allows them to freeze an enemy that approaches them, and their tremendously strong hooves cause blasts of ice, and their bravery has allowed them to face fearlessly even against trolls. Snow Elf royalty drove ivory chariots drawn by two or more mares into battle, and legends tell that their image of them charging into the battlefield border the divine. And today they are seen as the folklore as their masters have no longer ridden them into pure war because of the conflict between the Nords and the Snow Elves, now lost in time. The last place that you can learn how to summon one as a mount is in Darkfall Cave, next to the Snow Elf Gelibor's belongings. He will let you take the book and learn the spell for yourself. The mod page also goes on to tell you how these ice carved steeds were constructed, but after looting the spell tome and getting the spell for yourself, you can now summon your very own frost mount, and this is a very badass looking horse that you can ride into battle that also has special functions, such as being able to freeze an enemy and actually be able to carry himself better than a regular horse in combat. Now we all know that the vanilla game of Skyrim doesn't really have that many mounts that you can choose and even customize, but having a frost courser as a way of being able to travel throughout Skyrim's environment in a new and unique way, that's definitely why it's featured here at our number 5 spot, so I'd strongly recommend downloading the Frost Coursers Mahale Monsters and Animals mod. Coming in at our number 4 spot, we have the Blood Glass Weapons and Armor mod. Now this is a very simple merge of the Blood Glass Weapons and Blood Glass Armors mod, as requested by the community, and you can craft them in any forge under the glass section. Now how you can craft these is you have to have the original glass piece itself under the glass section, and to craft it into the blood glass type, you're going to need three corundum ingots whenever it comes to making the weapons. The armor has a little bit of a different crafting recipe, but for all the weapons, you just need the original glass weapon and then three corundum ingots. Once you combine them together, you'll be able to craft your very own blood glass sword, great sword, war axe, battle axe, mace, warhammer, and dagger, as well as being able to craft a blood glass cuirass, gauntlets, boots, helmets, and even a shield using corundum ingots and a combination of leather strips. Now whenever I personally play the game, I always find myself going more towards the light armor category, and glass and elven are the two that I kind of stick around whenever it comes to armor and weapons, so the blood glass weapons and armor is a perfect mod whenever it comes to having the glass armor because it's completely new and remastered, but it also doesn't remove the original glass weapons and armor in the game. So you actually have to craft all of the glass armor and weapons first before you can transform them to the blood glass weapons, which gives you more of a feel of upgrading your armor as you progress more through your character. I for one wish there was an armor mod that upgraded all of the different armors in the game, such as a more upgraded elven version, maybe a 1, 2, and 3 tier, and then maybe for Daedric you could do the same where it's 1 tier, 2 tier, and 3 tier. Now that's just a small idea that I have for changing the vanilla game and how it works because I really like the way that this blood glass weapons and armor mod does it in terms of upgrading your armor because you have the original glass and then you have to upgrade it to the blood glass instead of it just replacing all of the glass weapons and armor in general. All in all, if you really love the way that the glass weapons and armor look in the game and you want to change them to a different color being red and have them be more powerful, then the Blood Glass Weapons and Armor mod is definitely the mod worth checking out, and that's why it's featured here at our number 4 spot, so I'd recommend downloading it and giving it a try for yourself. 
Coming in at our number three spot, we have the Fortified Whiterun mod. Now this is a perfect mod for the exterior of Whiterun, and the mod page reads that this seeks to bring realistic and logical defenses to our most beloved city of Whiterun. There's been changes made at each major archway and main gates, creating individually defensible sections. Stone walls with towers can now be seen surrounding the road up to the city, and medieval hoardings have been built around the first gate, providing cover for archers and crossbowmen. There's also been wooden watchtowers added to provide additional elevation for defense and to serve as lookouts, and battlements now have extra protection. The mod author also states that Bethesda did an incredible job on designing the five major cities by placing them in strategic locations with exceptional defensible layouts. Bethesda came so close to having proper fortifications, but each city has some very questionable and illogical design flaws and protection. Such as Whiterun's walls, how they were so low before, are now changed to be completely new and fortified, and actually make sense in terms of staying defended during the Civil War. This mod has also been created with compatibility in mind, so it should be compatible with other overhauls such as JK, Kato, Capital Whiterun expansion, and other Whiterun overhauls that don't cover the exterior. I'm a really big fan of the changes that have been made to the exterior of Whiterun, and this is actually going to be staying on my load order from now on, because it's very compatible with the other mods that also change our Whiterun. Adding the fortified Whiterun to this list will definitely give us the greatest looking Whiterun imaginable, and that's definitely why it comes in at our number 3 spot, so I'd strongly recommend downloading the fortified Whiterun mod. Coming in at our number 2 spot, we have a mod that I'm very excited to cover, and that's the Improved Telekinesis mod. This is a simple, lightweight addition of adding body support to the Telekinesis spell, so that you can now move a body or object with the Vanilla Telekinesis spell. And that's it! There's no changes to force, speed, or damage, it simply just makes the Vanilla Telekinesis spell more helpful than it was before in terms of utility. But it also makes it a very powerful offensive ability. You can now pull archers off of ledges, face plant adversaries into a wall of flames, or throw someone off of a mountain. So this completely changes the alteration skill tree and gives you so much more incentive to go out and up your skills in it. The original telekinesis spell just allowed you to pick stuff off of tables using a spell and be able to throw them at people and do very very minimal damage. This gave the telekinesis spell pretty much no use and really turned me off of the alteration skill tree. But now that I can pick up bodies and be able to move people off of ledges or get people from really far away, it'll just completely change the way that I play the game and take out some of my targets. I think it would be very useful and very bad badass if you had some sort of vampire character who had telekinesis, you'd be able to drag someone in close to you and then absorb their health using your other hand. I believe that this improved telekinesis mod is going to be another mod that I also include in my load order from now on, just because of how useful it is and how fun it can be to experiment with the different ways of taking out these enemies. And that's why it comes in at our number 2 spot, so I'd strongly recommend downloading the improved telekinesis mod. Coming in at our number one spot, we have another player home called the Riverwood Cliff House. Now this house mod is incredibly detailed and allows you to do so much around the house, and it also adds a bunch of new items to the game for you to use inside the house as well, and a new follower to the Riverwood Trader who can sell you these items. This cliff house can be found right outside of Riverwood, it's almost impossible to miss, and it's yours upon entry. Now there's so much that you can do inside of this house that will also grant you a buff effect that raises your status. This can be done by washing your hands, brushing your teeth, using the toilet, washing your body, and even entering the bath. This mod may not be the most lore friendly house mod, but it's definitely the one that has the most utility that I've seen in a while. So let me give you the grand tour of the newest Riverwood Cliff House.
So as you can see, this house mod allows you to do so much and add some new items into the game to explore and temper with. And with it adding all this and still staying below a megabyte, coming in at 748.91 kilobytes, if you're looking for a new house mod near the Riverwood Forests, then the Riverwood Cliff House is definitely a mod that I'd recommend checking out. And that's definitely why it comes in at our number one spot, so I'd recommend downloading it. So that's pretty much it for this week's episode of the Top 5 Skyrim Mods of the Week. Hopefully you guys did enjoy, and if you did, I'd appreciate it if you left a like and subscribe if you're new. It really helps me out a lot. And if you have any suggestions for mods you'd like me to cover in future Top 5 Mod episodes, be sure to let me know in the comment section below. Or you can follow me on Twitter. I'll be sure to leave my Twitter in the description, and you guys can follow me on there and leave me suggestions there as well. Special shout out to my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys so much for everything that you guys have done for me. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully you guys did enjoy, and I will talk to you guys later.